By Joe Duffy Group, Ireland's leading motor group, representing 21 brands nationwide for sales, service and parts. Think cars, think joeduffy.ie. When are you going to see that man for what he is? Which one of us are they going to believe I do wonder? And it's coming closer. Hello and welcome to Hooked on the Deceived with me, Maureen O'Connell. This is our companion podcast to the psychological thriller from the creator of Derry Girls, Lisa McGee, and her husband, Tobias Beer. We have made it finally to episode four. This is the grand finale where the truth about Roisin has finally broken through the web of lies that were spun between Cambridge and Ireland. Ophelia tried desperately to escape the clutches of Michael while he used every manipulative trick in the book to cover his tracks. There's so much to discuss and I'm joined by the deceived groupies Gordon Rochford and Nadine Reed. Hello guys. Hello. We're finally. finally here. You can and loosen the belt. The spoilers are out. Jesus. The one thing you have to say about The Deceived is that, you know, you watch an awful lot of television shows these days and it's like they're three episodes too long. Mm. This is perfect. The four episodes, it's just jam-packed, isn't it, Nadine? I could, uh, Completely. Completely uh, for, jam-packed. Uh, what was that good? The, the, second, the second episode, <laughs> I, was, I was ready to bail out, I'll be honest with you. Okay. First episode, then, meh. Second episode, I'm like, ah. Third episode, ah. Oh. And then the fourth episode, I was like, ah. Oh. Yeah, you know? Same. It was a roller coaster going up. Because it never happens. Because by the second one, we were all sitting here kind of going, Ophelia, just li- just yeah. get. No. Just go home. Oh. Just go home. They're 29 euros plus one tax and Ryanair. One of the world's most beautiful home. airports is in Donegal. Go. <laughs> go see something. You know, it comes top of the list all the time. This episode. Does it really? It does. I didn't know that. Be- it's on a beach. Oh, there we go, Nadine's gonna. Oh you're gonna have to go back to Donegal and so see this airport. So flying to Donegal next time, no driving. Now this episode <laughs> starts with someone who is actually pivotal, pivotal, but they kind of made us forget about her throughout the other episodes. And it's Annabelle who was Michael's student. Nadine, it's all about her. This is where everything catches up with him. All about Annabelle, isn't it? But you know what? I was like, literally, there's one black woman in this whole show. And she's murdered. <laughs> Thanks for that, Lisa. Thanks, Tobias. Hashtag representation. <laughs> I know. I yeah. was like, please. And her work is stolen. I'm oh like, gosh, when will this end? When we, so it's like seeing, it's like sometimes <sighs> when people would see a black character in a horror movies in the 90s, you'd be like, you're, you're, you're about to die. Yeah. You're going to die. Why yeah. are you doing yeah. that? Don't run upstairs. Yeah. Oh. Don't do this to us. But yeah. with Annabelle, we see yeah. at the start, because we go back one year ago and that Michael used the exact same tricks he used on, on Ophelia yeah. to bring Annabelle into his web. He's smoking in front of her inside the room, Gordon, oh, yeah. telling her she's the best girl he's, in the world. He's, he's in fact smouldering. He's just smouldering. Feet up on the desk, moustache a twiddling, you know, beard just like perfectly groomed. Very. I followed Emma Chase Gallon now on Instagram. I've changed my mind since we started doing this show. And he's, I, I think for like, I'm, you know, I'm not, but attractive man. Do I have you? I don't know. But I oh, think come on. if Emma Chase Scanlon asked me to try and help him hide a murder in Donegal, I think I might. <laughs> Are you serious? I don't know. He's just... we, we'll have someone's good looks There's make a... you commit murder. Like, come on. I, I, come I, on, Gordo. As long Tomorrow as he doesn't have to do a Donegal accent, I mean, <laughs> whatever it is. I think the whole thing about Michael with this is, you know, he's employing all of his tricks. We see everything that he's done for years as yes. how he's brought all these people to the edge, how he's made them fall in love with him. Mm-hmm. And it turns out in this episode, because Annabelle is the one, he steals her work. He murders her to steal her work. He makes his wife, who did murder her, Roisin. Spoilers. Th- spoilers. Think it's all her fault, <laughs> yeah. right? When it was an accident. You're like, um, this is sorry. an accident. It was Roisin's fault that she murdered someone. Absolutely. I get that. <laughs> it was her fault. But also, oh, would we kind of think that it's a little bit about Michael because he's made her so jealous over the years? Because we get into moments of him making her think that he's been cheating. I've, I've, I've so, accused him of cheating so many times. As much as Charlie Manson would be culpable for the Manson family, like Tex and all those other people going up to, uh, 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 what's his name, Roman Polanski's house and doing all yeah. those murders. Charlie Manson was like, go on. And then we're going to do that. Come on. Come on, kids. We yeah. gotta, we're a clean Hollywood, man. Come on. And he manipul- Helter Skelter. Helter Skelter. He, he manipulated them into committing a murder. And he was put in jail for his whole whole life because of that he didn't actually do any murders I'm not defending Charlie Manson but Michael the same had Roisin in such a, a fever that she was out committing a murder Michael like, I Charlie know. Manson Could he be? beard beard oh, shagging gosh. everything that moves shagging everything that moves oh my god Lisa McGee is a Charlie Manson fan that's what we're Must going be. with, with all of this Ophelia <laughs> 
We've been very oh. hard on Ophelia Completely. for the last three episodes. Going, Completely. you're just, just move, Completely. just go, go. Sorry, Ophelia. <laughs> We're I, would closer. you like to apologise yes, to her, Ophelia, Nadine? Ophelia, I apologise to you. Thank you for revealing <laughs> that you're actually not Alice in Wonderland, but a true Jedi. She is the Luke Skywalker of this show. Something <laughs> happened to her as it went on, and she realised her Jedi skills, and she was like, Ooh. she started waving her. What's that thing called, Gordon? Lightsaber. Lightsaber, thank you, Erin. And she literally revealed everything. She revealed everything. And and even when I thought, oh, here, she's missed out, uh, she's missed something out, she still left the manuscript with, is that another spoiler? Um, With Sean. Well, we're, we're, to make sure that oh, spoilers, lads, you've, this is the you've watched episode four. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. we're talking okay. about here. Okay. It's all good. Yeah, so I'm, I'm living for Ophelia now. Well done, Jedi. Because Completely. it's Love her. It. We see in this that she gets frantic. Mm. And what he's done mm. is that he's made her, she realised he's tried to make her think that she's crazy, Gordon. Yeah. yeah. Throughout this whole thing and her realisation, it comes out in a sort of, crazy way she's erratic she's like he's trying to make me crazy and she de- she does all this to Fireman Sean mm-hmm. uh, who we think is a lovely guy and she's like he's made me crazy she lays out the knife in the bag mm. she talks about the fake doctor the pills that he but was it, giving her which were tranquilizers. it all comes out in such a crazy way he, he's probably like uh oh like where's my pet rabbit Mate, get, her away, get her away from the cooker <laughs> like small bit you know yeah he did fully glen close her completely yeah I but get also that. I, think, I, get that. I think Sean to be fair he's like a maybe a a sheltered country boy up in Donegal and he hasn't got many good looking women around the town really? to be kind of practicing his sexiness on yeah he's a little bit kind of misogynistic is he not the character oh he's a like, scumbag she's at a funeral and he's like well did you ever drop the hand on a corpse? Go and touch him there. And she's like, I kind of want to touch him. And he's like, go on. It's not like, misogynism. That's just weird. like, you're from England. Go over and kiss the dead body. We all do that all the time. Yeah, but then when she comes over with the problems, he's like, yeah, I'll help you. Trust me. And then he drives her straight back to Michael's house. He's oh. like, Michael, your missus is after going mental. And she came over to me and she tried to touch my willies. Don't say, like, I didn't want to say that or whatever. He's a weirdo, Sean, the he character. Is, no, it's, he deceived us the most. He's a sexy weirdo. Okay, here we go. Right. Paul Mesk- deceived us the most. Why did he deceive you the most? Because he acted like, like you just said, he's this lovely guy. I'll help you. I'll be there for you. What do you need? I'll get you a drink, make you a cup of tea, help you out. Oh no, I'm going to bring you back to the practical serial killer narcissist that is your partner, Michael. But do you not think that he's Terrible. part of, of Michael's plan? Because the whole thing um, is to make Ophelia seem crazy. Mm. That was his plan from the very start it, throughout the entire village. And Ophelia Ophelia has worked it out. She knows that if she doesn't do something, she's going to be gone. She's, mm-hmm. she's, she's gone. You're in danger, girl. Uh, you're, you're in danger, girl. We got that the whole time. <laughs> so she's worked this out and she thinks she's got this one ally because, of course, she's had Mary who's oh, like, wow. hey, you're going to <laughs> My dead daughter. My dead. You're not you going to hear she's dead. Everyone's dead, she lives. Yes, Did you hear that? Yes, she's now, behind you. She's like behind her. you. <laughs> she's behind you all the time. So do we not think that Paul is actually just emblematic of the control that Michael has over an entire town? Like he's Whenever he goes into the pub, all. they're like, Michael! Oh, no, Life no. and soul of the party. Do we not think that he has been deceived rather than being the one who's been deceiving us, poor Sean? Well, he has deceived us and he's been manipulated. Everything we see Both. of Sean is... Both. He's like a dog with two Mickeys. He's looking, he's at the funeral <laughs> chatting her up. He's standing over a corpse chatting her up. He meets her in the kitchen. She's only in off the boat. And he's like, well, you're new. Fancy, you know, I don't know, swipe right or whatever. Like, he's into her <laughs> yeah. immediately. And he doesn't have any other, there's no other, like, examination of his character. He's just like, well, women. <laughs> oh! And then she goes like, I need help. He goes, you can trust me. When anyone says you can trust me, you can don't. know for sure. Trust. Don't trust Don't them. trust them. Never. We we said in episode one that he was thinking about increasing the gene pool of a small town in Donegal <laughs> and that he needed to do that. Yeah, yeah. And then he it's does... a whole series on his own. He does betray her, but uh, he betrays Ophelia, but this is all because of Michael. And we yeah. see in this episode the most... It started at the end of episode three when he meets Richard, Annabelle's uh, Annabelle's brother. Um, he's forgotten about the backpack and now we see him lose control for the first time yes. in a very long time in his life, I'd say. In yeah. Cambridge, he had everything under control. Mm-hmm. So in this, when he starts losing control, it's the backpack mm-hmm. that's gone. He goes to a solicitor's 
and this is I loved this yeah. because it's so very Irish about Wills all over the world. Is okay. He's looking for this is his new. he's looking for the life insurance yeah. straight away. Where's the life insurance on my missus because she's dead? And the solicitor's like, "Sorry, now you live in Ireland. This is going to take twenty five years. What are you yeah. talking about?" <laughs> the guard is a friend of the family. Come on, dude. We're not like, paying out. It's We're not totally sus. Yeah. Because that was interesting. He, his face when he was told, "Oh, the payout's going to be a very long time. Mm. We have to, you know, the guard." People think it's suicide. Yeah. It wasn't suicide. I told you it's too, it wasn't suicide. And the solicitor's like, you go? I'm getting paid either way, man. Yeah. Do you yeah, know? Yeah. So I thought that was, he leaves the solicitor's office and he's not in a good place. Oh, he's unsatisfied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he wants something to happen of this. And then he runs around uh, all over the place. I think we can all nod to the fact he's making an escape plan is what Michael's doing. Part of that escape panicking. plan. He's panicking. He's mm. completely panicking. Definitely. But he's had the foresight because he knows mm. all this time the whole plan was we know Roisin's alive and he needs to get he needs to bring her somewhere else. And then we see the most beautiful Hollywood thing in the entire world because I swear to God I don't think I've seen this in a bingo hall anywhere in my entire life. <laughs> he go, walks in. Bingo been called out the front. Michael walks in and goes get some passports Nadine. Literally the best moments in the entire series was Michael walking up past the star bingo star bingo star has bingo. been star bingo yeah. going and you're like why is he going to the bingo <laughs> to get the fake passport yeah. yeah epic epic moment loved it when loved COVID's it. over Stella Bingo and Limerick I'm coming in just to see what the hell is going on <laughs> in bingo maybe on. Lisa McGee has some insight it's like maybe there's like a whole so. secret crime <gasps> crime gang love running that. all the bingo halls in Ireland they're dealing that. drugs and human trafficking behind the scenes completely legs 11 it, yeah bingo. yeah it's all of this yes. so Anyway, in this throughout, we've had we've had a lot of pointers to the fact that Ophelia is going to end up tied up and gagged, right? And that's we the see first, her. Oh, it's the opening scene of the whole show. We see, yeah, that's yeah. the opening scene, and yeah. we see her tied up and gagged now by Michael mm-hmm. with his accomplice. Shall we talk about Mary? Oh, now, Mary's lots to be said about Mary. Crazy bitch. Right, you okay? Nadine <laughs> just had a smile on her face when you went Mary. Gordon's <laughs> eyes went like really, like you went slanty there, and the eyes you're like, hold yeah. on a second now. Mary, Mary is way more culpable, way more involved, way more sinister than anyone has given her credit for in the show or outside. Mm-hmm. I think she's very responsible. She's a cohort. She's a co-conspirator in this murder. She and killed she's, no one. She yeah, just but, made cups of tea but there's, there's, and appeared behind people from time to time. But if your friend killed somebody and then you helped them bury the body, you go to jail too, Nadine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mary's, yeah, but Mary's hello, just as involved. Nobody's going to jail for this, are they? But so, there we go. Is, but isn't this interesting? Roisin is the one that it's revealed she killed Annabelle when Annabelle came to her house, mm. confronted Roisin with the truth of the fact that her husband is a cheater and he'd stolen her work. Yeah. In a fit of rage, Roisin kills her. We don't see what happens. He lamps her, he lamps her with an award. Yeah. She lamps her with an award. With her yeah. award. Yeah, that's probably <gasps> Accidentally. it. Accidentally. Accidentally. And then they <laughs> stuff her in a boot and drive her to Ireland. Mm. And then God, that's Michael, a long drive now thinking about it. <laughs> it is a long Wait drive. A second. With a decomposing a body. Yeah. From Cambridge to Donegal. Yeah, it's With a, a body in the back. Yeah. So like you on go, the ferry and everything. You go Hollyhead. <laughs> Right, get on the ferry and then it's a good four hour drive. That's a they're lucky, long They're lucky they did a pre-Brexit or else to be border stops and all sorts of things. You know? Could we check your boot, please? Yeah, I mean, border. they'd be having all of this. But I've just like, got some fireworks. Please let me go. But yeah. with all of this. <laughs> and wine from France. They take the wine. A wink. If yeah. So, We've, so he didn't he didn't kill he didn't kill Annabelle sure mm-hmm. and he also didn't dispose of her body he got someone else to do his dirty work he needed an alibi and went to the pub yeah Mary yeah Mary's Mary's the fire starter she's yeah. the instigator so twisted fire starter she's the one doing it man is Mary she's trying to save her daughter her daughter has come home they're trying they're going to lock Roisin away in Mary's mm. creepy child's room and she's doing this for her child mm-hmm. um you know, I'm not That's a parent. That's not okay, like I don't Mary. Know. Yeah. Come on, Mary, it's not okay. But at this stage, they've moved the body from the scene of the crime. Mm-hmm. They've had it for ages and ages and ages. Mm-hmm. Is Mary as culpable as Michael? Yes. Yeah. 100%. Yes, completely. I they, agree. they set up I the agree. body. She sprayed the perfume on the body so it's the, the burning creepy. corpse would smell like Roisin. So creepy. Weird. She lit the fire on the chaise lounge. Yeah. She and then she. The makeup pack, the compact. The whole there. thing. Set up a whole yeah. crime scene. Like, that's like 
Columbo's wet dream. Like that's <laughs> it's an absolute CSI CSI season finale what she did there. Like she's absolutely culpable and she is a covert narcissist. She's the one who had who was manipulating Roisin all the way along but not doing it as like sexily and smolderingly as Michael. He's very overt. He's very like, "Oh yeah, you do that. You yeah. are you are you thinking your own thoughts? Are you thinking your own thoughts?" Like Mary's kind of like, "Oh well, uh oh. Woo! She's like, you're my little girl. Yeah. You're always. my little girl always. Remember when your daddy died? And yes. You, remember when your daddy died? So it seems a sorrow. I didn't think, I thought I'd lost you as well. And oh. then Michael put you back together. So she's reinforcing that Please. he's the one who can put her back together. Congratulations, Mirren. That was a great audition. Lisa McGee's going to have you on the sequel. Season two of the scene. <laughs> Sorry, Marta Carl. And Roshi's I, best friend. And I can grow, uh, I, I can grow a pretty good beard. So. <laughs> but, but the thing about her being covert now, is she has now conditioned Roisin to be susceptible to people who can manipulate her because she manipulated her her whole life. Right, you think. So she was ripe, ready for somebody like Michael. Okay. She was like telegraphing, uh, I'm, a, I'm a manipulatable person. I've been conditioned to this my whole life. And traditionally in relationships like that, like a parent narcissist will leave the child open to a, a, a narcissist partner as well and they take over, um, they have all the cues and the, the people, they just know instinctively how to get them to do what they want. So like between Mary and Michael, Roisin was screwed. She was, she was full of tablets. Yeah. She was in a creepy room she with was. all her childhood toys with a weird like clink, 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 clink. the weird ballet music, music, music box. box. Yeah. Like Mary had her as a prisoner. In the house, yeah. feeding her full of Xanax or, or sleepers was that, or There was always, she was kind of liquored up, but mm. let's go back to Ophelia Skywalker as I will always refer to her right now. <gasps> Roisin <gasps> shouldn't have been in the house when Ophelia's locked up, she comes. They have this big, you know, mea culpa. It's kind of the, the chat between the two women of what it is. And Ophelia yeah. lays it out going, he has yeah. been manipulating you your entire life. Entire None life. of this is your fault. Mm. Mm. It was a moment of genius from Ophelia what she was able to do. At last. At last. <laughs> she's about to die, so she's got to give out one last thing. <laughs> Roisin starts to understand this and Michael comes back, sees them, hates the fact that they're talking. He's like, this isn't my plan. I need to kill mm-hmm. Ophelia and mm-hmm. run away with Roisin. Mm-hmm. And a kid. It's like, dude, you're, you're not a good yeah. guy. Like, oh. if I didn't think you were a good guy before. All of a sudden you're thinking he's not a good guy. Man. Yeah. I would have everything up Come until, on. everything up until that, I'd be like, fine. <laughs> and it ends up with... <laughs> Uh, Roisin coming in <laughs> saving the day knocking Michael over the head with a brick Whee! and he falls through the floor I wonder where she learnt that so yeah <laughs> she's a double murderer mm. completely do you have compassion for Roisin? no not one piece of compassion I don't have any compassion for Roisin she's a disappointing example of a woman I literally I have no time for her she murdered someone got away with it murdered another person got away with it and then ends up in Morocco living her best life hello eat pray love thank you Elizabeth Gilbert for this moment moment like how has Roshan got away with all that narcissist parents or not but she's like she's, she's a murderer like, I was about to say she's like Dexter but to be fair Michael's the only bad one Annabelle was a pretty sound person no, yeah. Roshan's did just horrific her life. Roshan's so, horrific I have no time for Roshan do you think Roshan's horrific horrific I think Roshan is a product of her and horrific her uh, <laughs> well I mean I hate Mary you hate Roshan hey it's all good uh, I think Roshan's a product of her conditioning uh, like that she had that whole life with Mary being manipulated and then fell into a relationship with Michael who's who's like very overtly controlling mm. of her um, she is a, she's an accomplished woman she's a writer an award winner she's written books she was more successful than Michael and made him feel two inches long and four foot tall yeah like he, no, she murderer. didn't make him. He felt like that. That was his own. That was his own issue. It was nothing on her. It's just his. Yeah, okay, own okay. Issues, it's the semantics say. of it, but I mean, he he was he was made to feel like that by his own internal okay. like so lack of time, self-esteem or so whatever. So how much time should Roisin do for this murder? And say this was a court of law now. Does she get to do the full time? Which just do well, a little bit. Well, of at, the the, see, at the end of the episode, on, this is the thing yeah. because at the end we've got well, course of control, and that's on the, yeah. that's on the law books now that it's yeah. it is a defence and it's something that can be punished. But mm-hmm. I'm good. I was always good at coming up with reasons as to, you know, on the spot why I didn't go to mass. I'd always be like, oh no, I was there. And I'd, I'd, I'd you know, they'd, they'd, I'd get a friend to give me the, the little book and I'd be like, no, the first reading was from the Corinthians. I was totally at mass. Yeah. These people can come up with plans on the spot because yeah, Mary's true. like, right, let's go. I'm going to talk to the guards and the journalists. Get you out of here, Roisin. Ophelia, go back, have your kid, 
happy out. She'd be a great wedding planner or something like um, that. She she's would just be. she's great in a crisis. Oh my gosh, she's great in a crisis. You've lost yeah. the rings. You've lost. She would sort. She'd chop yeah. a yeah. finger so off and get a ring off someone else and <laughs> yeah. lash it on. If you got problems, call Mary. Call Mary because yeah. we see um, Roisin at the very end. She's living. We're assuming Morocco, oh. and she's. I, I was saying it could be like a very fancy cafe in Clontarf. We don't know. <laughs> Do you know what? A lovely warm day. Cultural appropriation yeah. going on all over the place. A, if it is a July afternoon. She's there. She's Clontarf. gazing out. And next mm. thing, can I sit down here? <gasps> Hello, Roisin, a name she hasn't gone by in a year. Yes. It's Annabelle's brother, Richard. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Are we going to see a season two of The Deceived? No. No. There I won't hope be. So. I mean, it could, you could go off into Clodagh's backstory. Do we could we could get early Michael, teenage Michael, when he's like strangling oh, squirrels and like yeah. interfering with cats. It could it could totally happen. Did you like how it ended, Nadine? Not really, because I feel like a murderer got away with being a murderer. Yes, I understand narcissism, blah blah blah. <laughs> that's how she ended up like that. But the empathy still going off here, two people, is and now she's living her best life in Morocco, eating pita bread and on her new Mac computer. Or could that be the another for book? season two? Maybe it is, and if it does, it's very cleverly done. Or as God, I was saying, maybe Richard. Maybe there's new storyline maybe about him, and he'll be like, I don't know, a new season of Twenty Four, and he's going to like solve crimes across the world. Maybe I don't know. Maybe the police saw how well he was able to track down Roisin in exactly. a foreign country exactly. and we're all like Richard would you like a job and then it's all like I have a very special set of skills exactly and in Richard ends of, up being in the line of not Dara coming yeah. your way yeah. Richard yeah. not Dara Manhunter were, like the, were you happy with how it ended Gordon <laughs> not at all right okay. Mary absolutely pulled the piss it was made so convoluted the ending could have been Roisin hits Michael over the head with a brick he falls through the roof smashes his cane off the ground brown bread right the three girls are left alive and we just go, okay, so Michael killed Annabelle. We killed Michael because he was trying to kill us. Case closed. You might do two years for manslaughter, self-defense, something like that, mm. right? Say nothing. But they made up this whole thing where they created a whole other murder. Started cutting their own hands and like smearing it on the back of the car and then driving the car to a remote location. And then she's going off to Morocco and then Mary's going, and then, and then this happened. And then this happened. And good tubbing. And, you know, all it was like an Irish oral Chuck exam. Tree, with all of this. Just way too <laughs> much. Well, though. I it thought well. it way was too very well end. done if we're going with Lee. the suspenseful madness that happened. Yeah. I would definitely watch it second season if it went off into Same. what happened with Cloda. Yes. What happened Cloda's with... backstory is very intriguing. Oh, it's so, I want to so know good. more about Cloda. I love her. I love them all. Guys. Guys. Is this it? It's, it. Well, it's, it's the, the end. end. Nadine and Gordon Rochford, thank you so much for all of your hard work on Hooked on the Deceived. Thanks well very done. much. Well done. It's Thanks been great. Us. Thanks, Lisa and Tobias. Good work. And I you would can like listen to my podcast, Those Conspiracy Guys, for oh, more true crime stuff. There you go. Into it. And you can follow Nadine Reed and buy her new line for Littlewoods wherever Ooh. you, you I'm find it. I'm wearing something from Littlewoods right now. <laughs> 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 listen, hopefully we'll get to do this soon. Um, it was absolutely brilliant. But for now, huge thanks, Gordon and Nadine. Thanks, Thanks Mira. You're not the first. You won't be the last. And it's coming closer. My wife is dead. We set it in motion. When are you going to see that man for what he is? You're not well. No, 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 please. Which one of us are they going to believe? I do wonder. And it's coming closer. Joining me now to pull the curtain back on some of the sinister human traits and manipulative behaviour at play in The Deceived, and there's a lot of it, is Dr. Denise Mullen, consultant psychologist and psychotherapist specialising in narcissistic behaviour. Denise, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, it's good to be here. We've talked about narcissistic behaviour so much in this podcast. What exactly is it? Well, if if you want to talk in terms of the traits, the the main traits would be manipulation, which you saw in Michael would be control. Uh, control would be almost number one. A sense of entitlement. Whatever is yours that I want, I'm entitled. Whatever I see, basically, I'm entitled. Uh, lying. He was an adept liar, wasn't he? He was just so skilled at uh-huh. it. Um, a lack of empathy. No, no concern with what the other person feels or the devastation that's caused by his actions. And I don't mean, well, I'm just focusing on Michael. And with Michael, do we see it from the start when you started watching The Deceived? Were you sitting there going, oh, here we go, that you could spot little bits in his behaviour? You can spot little bits only because I've seen it for 30 years. So I would be looking for that. He basically targeted Ophelia. He saw her. He spotted her. I think he saw a vulnerability in her from a distance even. And then 
they had, if you remember back to episode one, they had a couple of chance encounters. Yeah. Uh, where a paper was knocked down, he picked it up, and then shortly after that, they met in his office. Um, he was testing different things. He was looking for, can she be manipulated? Can I say something and she'll go along with it? Um, he asked her specifically, do you mind if I smoke here in the office? Yes. Other students have uh, have not been happy with that. And he was just testing how, how much, how far. So he was checking, can she be manipulated? Can she be controlled? Will she keep coming forward as I do these things? So um, you wouldn't, you, I don't think with anyone who's a narcissist, we necessarily see it right off the bat. Yeah. Because a lot of them are skilled. Um, he was more covert. So he's more subtle. He wasn't an overt, screaming, uh, grandiose narcissist, but more of a covert and drawing her to him more or less by seduction. Is is it unconsciously done by him then that it's naturally within him to be able to do this? Or do you think that that's a talent that's honed over years to get what he wants? Well, uh, funny, using the word talent, yes, it's honed over many years. It's a skill base. And you could call it a talent. Um he would have had probably early injuries that moved him that direction where he didn't, it would be hard to go into all the basics of the attachment um, and what happened early on to set that up. But he would have been building that skill set for a number of years and basically testing the waters all the time. If, let's say, Ophelia hadn't responded well to his, uh, I don't want you to smoke in here, and she was strong in that, even polite but strong, he would have said, oops, there's somebody who has strong boundaries. There's somebody who knows herself and who's clear on what she wants and doesn't want. He probably would have dumped her right there and stopped the whole thing. It's that. It was that simple. He's checking and yeah. he's testing. And when he gets green lights, he keeps pushing. And if he would get strong red lights, that would be the cue. Oops, move on to the next. next. Was it important that she was sort of an isolated person, that her dad was out of the picture and her mom had died, that, that she didn't seem to have a support structure? It would need to be someone who's somewhat vulnerable or um, able to be manipulated. Okay. So whether it would be that she didn't have a support structure, it could go any way. But if the person themselves is vulnerable and can be manipulated and the narcissist is a skilled um a person able to read that clearly, then they're sucked in. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's kind of a horrible in. jigsaw piece mm. that they have to fit together. She yes. has to be not a willing uh, a participant in this, but she has to have some, uh, her psychology has to fit in with what he wants. Is that right? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Okay, so she kind of didn't have a hope, Ophelia, did she? Um... Hard or, to say, hard okay. to say. I, I think when someone has a strong sense of self, it goes back to that. They have more hope. Yeah. They're not as easily manipulated. But when someone is is too flexible and they aren't clear about their boundaries, remember they had sex in the office? Yes. The first time they met. So it was too much, too fast. So he he was pushing like crazy and he broke down all her barriers, her boundaries right there in the first hour. So he knew he had landed a big one. <laughs> See, so that's interesting because when we're when we're brought in in episode one, she's like, as soon as I saw the house, I should have turned. Exactly. And gone. Everything for her is hindsight. Everything. That she doesn't see what she's doing as she goes through it. And probably 10 different times in episode one and two, she said things like that. I knew this wasn't going the right direction. I saw the house. I was frightened. I should have stopped then. I shouldn't have pursued him when... When she was trying to follow Michael and went to his dad's house, yeah, she was saying at his doorstep, I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't. But what she did was successfully push aside every single visceral sense that she had, every single bit of common sense, everything in there that was screaming at her turned back. She pushed it aside because she, w she was in a push-pull sort of a, a inner dialogue where she could see this wasn't good, it wasn't healthy. She had alarm bells going off, but there was something so appealing about him that she just pushed past all the alarm bells. I'm, I'm calling it the beard again. I need to stop with this beard. I think that's what it is. Wait, there's, there's a term called narcissistic supply. What does that mean, Denise? 
Let's go back to Michael. Yeah. Michael would want a following, so to speak. Now there are uh, there are a wide range of narcissistic um, people and what they want. Narcissistic supply would be someone who would be kind of adoring, who wouldn't question even even when he's lying, and it's pretty clear that he's lying at different points. Uh, someone who continues to believe that and press on. Someone who is adoring and who is believing and who sees the good in them and who doesn't question them too much. So is that Roisin? Roisin more so than any other character in that. Yes, Roisin was really, really snowed. Because of And feels, sad. And sad. Very sad. And he, we saw him like when it did a flashback to seven years previously in episode three. And we saw her, you know, she was wearing a certain dress. He got her a new dress. He wanted her to wear that one. She wanted to stop drinking and he made her have another drink. So he's doing all of this to be like, he's the one controlling her. And her best friend, Ruth, can't get through through. to her. Yeah, Mm -hmm. she was seeing through Michael, but she Mm -hmm. couldn't get through to Roisin because Roisin, we see it in the final episode. Roisin says to her, you've always been jealous just because you're lonely. You know, don't take this out on me. He would never cheat on me. And who was saying that in the background? Michael was saying that continually in one form or another. Ruth is, Ruth is jealous of you. Ruth is trying to live your life. Ruth is this and Ruth is that. So he'd been planting seeds in Roisin all along to be very concerned about motives coming from Ruth. I think Michael could very clearly see Ruth had a strong sense of self. She was aware of truth and she would speak truth and she wasn't going to be persuaded by his charisma. And even so anyway, so Ruth was clearly a threat to Michael. Yeah. He had to plant seeds of doubt in Roisin's mind and heart about Ruth so she would question her. But he never, he never, he didn't break them apart completely. No, but he planted seeds because that would be... The, in his situation, maybe the control would be too overt then. He's more of a covert narcissist. He's not one of those screaming, r- rageful, uh, I demand this, I demand that. Okay. And with the covert narcissism, is there something there with Matthew, his best friend, who would do anything for him? Like we hear him say to him, I just need to know what the story is for Ruth. Tell me what our line on this is. When Matthew rings about what's going on with Annabelle, what's going on back in Cambridge. Um and obviously, seven years previously, Matthew had declared his love at Nokdara. And Michael takes this moment where his face kind of changes a little bit. He absorbs it and just gives him a kiss on the cheek. Exactly. That was a really interesting moment. He, he wanted to keep the hook strong, didn't he? Yeah. He was reading Matthew. So that's what the um, narcissists are extremely good at. They have an intuitive sense where they can read the other person so accurately. They can read when they're pulling away. They can read when the hook is starting to slip. And he wanted to keep that hook strong. So he did. He, you could see him pause, think it over, and move forward and kiss him on the cheek to affirm unspoken things and so it was simply a hook I'm keeping you under my control and it's mad because it feels like Matthew has Matthew really gives the narcissistic supply as He's well adoring yes he had a number Sean Matthew uh, Mary for sure Roisin Ophelia so he had quite a wide range it was Annabelle when she gave Michael her book and he was like this is really good we can see him smoking in the room so she's obviously comfortable with that so it's the signs that they've already had that relationship that he's had with Ophelia. Mm-hmm. But she says to him when she gives him the manuscript, you know, and, and he knows that no one else has seen it. And he's like, OK, this is great. He's laying the foundation. When she says to him, could you do me one more favour? Could you have your wife look at it? Just because she's a respected novelist and he kind of looks at her and like And the dynamics really changed at that point, didn't they? Yeah. Is that he was just there? Was that him not just threatened, but angry that she wouldn't just need him? Well, yes. I mean, that threatens his his ego. That makes him feel very fragile, very vulnerable himself. Um, that had been made clear all the way through in various um, various bits of dialogue that he's very threatened by her success. He clearly knew she was more successful than he was. And for Annabelle to say that was insulting, hurtful. It, it kind of broke his defense a bit. Yeah. So that, yeah, that's the thing that we can really see. It would make see. him very angry, very angry. How has he managed 
to do this. It feels like he's got the whole world enthralled him. You mentioned Sean there. Poor little Sean. He, <laughs> he believes him. And then Mary, I think she's one of the most interesting characters oh my in goodness, this Mary. whole thing. What's going on with Mary? Well, Mary, OK, let me say it a different way, if I may. Roisin, why was she so easily controlled by Michael? Roisin was set up by her mom. Her mom was probably an equal narcissist. She was controlling. She was manipulative. She was demanding. She would say something and expect Ophelia, Roisin, whomever she was speaking to, to just do it, carry it out. She had, um, she had this relationship with Michael where they were so in sync. They were plotting together and carrying things out together at various points. We'll do this. We'll do that. When Annabelle was killed, they quickly began hatching a plot. Michael did. But Mary went along with everything. Mary was there, but she was also, she was equally controlling. If you watched her with Ophelia, yeah. she was controlling of Ophelia's movements and challenging I made a special her. dinner for you, all the teas. I made one for you special, all that stuff. I'm here. I'm on top of you. I'm pretty much dictating what you're going to do. Yeah. And so... Think of Roisin growing up in that household. It was very familiar for her to be controlled. It was very familiar for her to be dictated to, basically, yeah. and, and um, manipulated. Her mom was manipulative, not in an ugly way, in, in a mom-feminine sort of way, not the same as Michael, but still the same issues, control, manipulation, and probably lying as well. So yeah. Roisin was set up. And she was drawn to Michael like a magnet, most likely, because it was so familiar to be controlled. He would have had no, um, nothing stopping him with Roisin. It's funny if it's like she's been handed off like a, a baton because they, they, they mentioned her dad when her dad passed away. And Mary says, I thought I was going to lose you too. But mm. Michael, you were broken and Michael put you back together. Mm. That's the moment that we kind of see that Mary passed over control to him mm -hmm. resolutely. And she was happy to do that. Mm -hmm. Why would she have been happy to cede control? Why would she be happy to... Cede the kind of control she had over Roisin to someone else? Well, I would imagine at that point there would be he would she would be marrying someone. She okay. was becoming successful. She was beginning to move out of that comfortable range where the mother, you know, n probably near the the village that was familiar and whatever mom wanted to have tabs on, and if she could work with the guy that's controlling her, great. Great. That's yeah. fairly unusual to see the two of them in cahoots like that. It would be fairly unusual, but it certainly does happen. The poor thing. She didn't have a hope. God bless her. Poor Roisin, poor Roisin didn't. didn't. Roisin didn't. Oh, no. it was sad. And it was well captured by the writers. They really crafted that well to show the familiarity of the narcissistic control and manipulation and lying. It, it was just so well laid out. She is a double murderer, though. And Nadine and Gordon don't have any. They're like, they're like, oh, she's a murderer. I, I have a lot more empathy towards Roisin for what happened. The Annabelle stuff is wrong. I obviously think they should have gone to the police straight away and it would have been like, this is completely accidental. She was in my home. I was scared. Um, and she murdered her husband, but sure, whatever. But it, I have more empathy for her because of what she's been through. And I think the writers have brought me on that. Mm. You know, mm. with all of this, we're, we've been talking about narcissistic and narcissistic control and supply, but it's also gaslighting. What exactly is gaslighting? He was adept at that. If you watched all four episodes, he was adept at gaslighting, even though he was covert. He would flip things on Ophelia and on Roisin to make them believe that they couldn't trust themselves or their own opinion, that in fact he was right and they were wrong and that they should trust his opinion and everything. So he would make them believe. There was one scene in the car on the way back from the funeral, I think, for, for Hugh, yeah. the dad, where um, Ophelia says to Michael, what's going on here? I'm, what is going on? I, I don't even trust. I can't remember her exact words, but she was really challenging him. Yeah. And uh, he said he turned it on her and said, you've got to stop. You are doing something to me. You're seeing images of Roisin. You're hearing voices. You know, it's probably because you're pregnant. It's probably because you're overtired. So he's flipping it back. You're saying you're hurting me instead of listening to her pain and her terror. 
you're hurting me. You've got to stop this. But it's probably because you're pregnant and overly tired. And then he does what he always does. He used sex to appease and to shift the entire focus. And then I think he probably said at the end of that, you know, it's just the three of us, the baby, you and me, and I love you and all that stuff. So she bought it. And every time he was able to use sex to move it away from what was uncomfortable, change the subject, so to speak. Yeah, because she's fr- she's kind of a bit frantic in the car. And when they walk into the house and knock Dara, she's, she's all calm again. She's so calm. Absolutely mm, happy, calm. Happy, happy. And it's the same what he does to Roisin when he says um, after Annabelle's been murdered, he's in the house. Was it an accident? You've done this sort of thing before. So that's the gaslighting of her. Yes, perfect. Exactly. God, he's got and a lot. Roisin would have been so, so insecure by then because of the years and years and years yet there's a sense of self that is lost when we're under someone else's control and years have gone by so she is utterly confused inside she wouldn't know who she is or where she's going by that point um there is there's so much going on in it and there was moments of brevity that i thought were really great and and it's all brought together and it's beautiful but what did you make of the deceived overall considering that we are talking about narcissistic behavior uh, coercive control, we're talking about gaslighting, all very much things that we're all trying to see now when it comes to relationships. You know, we're seeing things in papers. We're seeing, yes. well, how, did you, how did you think it was all portrayed? I think they did a good job, especially in the end when Ophelia was tied up and Roisin was pacing back and forth and she did a, a quick summary of what Michael had been doing to her for years. She wrote, she actually says it out. She yeah. says out to Roisin, she says, um, he's got a fragile ego. He feeds off vulnerability. He uses people. He lies. Mm-hmm. He promises anything. He breaks them down until they're weak and confused and they no longer trust themselves. That's perfect. That's the sense of self that is lost to a controlling person. And so I think that the writers did an excellent job of just capturing it. They If you're going to look at a continuum, they showed us something on the far right of the continuum. You know, somebody who's really seriously pathological, dangerous. Um, You would not want to be in that village with Michael. I wouldn't. Um, (laughs) But they if you if you scale it back and look at the issues of control, manipulation, lying, lack of empathy, all of those And look at it in your everyday world, whether it's a partner, whether it's a friendship, whether it's in the office, this is going on all around us. And wherever we're being manipulated, that's where we have to be clear about our sense of self, our boundaries, and really find our voice and not allow it. That's so important because Ophelia, you could just see her being lost as, as the time went on. Anybody that's in that situation, I think that's what the show demonstrated they captured it. They they showed it in a very strong way, in a very dramatic way. It's happening all around us all the time. We need to take from that, maybe scale it back. Hopefully we're not in a Michael situation. Yes. Scale it back and look at the realities and know anytime you're being controlled by someone, something's wrong. Dr. Denise Mullen, that was so insightful. I think everyone's going to think all their mates are shifty now and going to be, are you a narcissist all the time? <laughs> Thank you for opening that world to me. Let's do it all the time. The Deceived opened a world for a world for us. For me, Maureen O'Connell, a huge thank you so much for your company over the last four episodes of the podcast. I can't believe the time has just flown by. And if you know someone who's about to start binge watching The Deceived, don't forget to tell them about this here podcast. For me and everyone on Hooked on The Deceived, thank you so much for listening and we'll chat to you again soon. When are you going to see that man for what he is? Which one of us are they going to believe, my dear wonder? And it's coming closer. Sponsored by Joe Duffy Group. Think cars, think joeduffy.ie.